Hello and welcome to another episode of Coastal Drones Weekly Questions Answered, where we take your most frequently asked questions about drones in Canada and answer them in these short videos. I am Coastal Kate and today we're answering the question, what drone should I use for my flight review? There's a few different criteria your drone has to meet to be used for a flight review, plus a recommendation. Let's dive in. One, it has to be capable of flight in advanced environments. What does this mean? It needs to be listed on the TC website as declared compliant for operations in controlled airspace, at least. Being declared for ops near or over people is fine too, but we need it to be listed here on this page, and that means at least it's good to go for controlled airspace. But Kate, what if my drone is a home-built unit? You're telling me I can't fly it? No, not what I'm saying. You can still fly it in basic environments once you hold your advanced certificate, but if you want to use it for a review, you have a couple of options and one requires a boatload more work than the other. You can submit a declaration for your drone where you state that you have all the required documents to support its safe operation in controlled airspace and or near or over people. This means you're taking on the role of manufacturer and are now responsible for compliance with the related cars. 901.78 is a good place to start. We're talking manuals, maintenance schedules, testing, etc., to a point where it's definitely not worth your effort to go this route just to complete a flight review. Option two would be to buy, borrow, or rent a drone for your flight review, get your advanced, and then just don't fly your home built in advanced environments. Two, it has to be registered. Not to you, necessarily. All the drones I fly are registered to the company, which, sidebar, is an awesome new functionality of the drone management portal. Three, Less of a requirement and more of a suggestion, if you're wondering what drone you should use for your review, it's the one you're familiar with. You want to feel comfortable with the operation of your drone for the review, so make sure you have given yourself time to play around with the settings and feel confident with your ability to fly it. Arguably the easiest part of the flight review is the flight portion, but with the added stress of the testing environment, you don't want to have anything working against you that's easily managed with a few practice flights before the day of your review. Okay, so let's go through this with an example. Can you use your DJI Mavic Mini or Mini 2 for your flight review? Assuming you're comfortable with your ability to fly it, that's one check mark. Can you register the Mini? Sure. Add some weight to it like a skin or prop guards and suddenly your 249 gram micro drone is 250 grams or more and can be registered. Is it approved for flights in advanced environments? No. This is where things fall apart. DJI has not declared the Mini for flights in controlled airspace near and over people. Of course, when it's a micro drone, it doesn't have to meet those requirements to do those things. But now that we've taken it up over 250 grams, we've wound ourselves up in a bit of a catch-22. Can't use it on a review without being registered, and if it's registered, it can't fly in advanced environments. Clear as mud? Don't shoot the messenger. If you're really committed to using your Mini on your flight review, you can work through the self-declaration process, but it's probably not worth your effort. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Coastal Drones Weekly Questions Answered. I'm Kate, and let us know below what question you want answered next week.